Today is a very, very, very special scroller box unboxing for multiple reasons, but uh, obviously we need a scroller box like this one. <laughs> this is the October 2019 scroller box. Let's open it up and find out why. I'm excited. <laughs> wow, for the first time, it's not all ripped open, so that's already special. Boom, 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 boom. Do you see all the purple? <laughs> So for the October Scarlet Box, I was asked to be the featured artist. So I'm very, very thankful for all your support. If it weren't for you guys, they definitely would not have reached out to me. So thank you. It's kind of funny. They had been kind of wanting to work with me for a while and we kind of like threw a few ideas back and forth. But in the end, like I was like, I don't know what kind of art supplies to include. Then out of the blue, they kind of reached out to me. It's like, hey, for our 50th box, we'd like to include Copic markers, specifically this purple pack and have you as the featured artist. And honestly, it worked out perfectly because I feel like as an artist, I kind of just use whatever tools are available. So the fact that they kind of picked the tools with me in mind for my scroller box just seems perfect. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know the exact supplies they picked. I know they said it needed eraser and stuff. So let's find out. Here are the Copic markers. They're the Copic Chow. It's specifically the doodle pack in purple. This was the only thing that I knew precisely what was going to be in the box. All right, so we have two Copic Chows. These are the star of the show, obviously. We have one in the color Mauve Shadow, one in the color Blueberry. Both are very purpley tones, as you might be able to tell. They have a brush nib on one end <laughs> and a chisel nib on the other, and the caps fit on the other end. Isn't that just perfect? Copic Chows are really nice because they're slightly cheaper than Copic Sketch Markers, which are my personal fave. And of course, the cap actually fits on the other end. But you're trading off with a smaller barrel so it holds a little less ink. And then it doesn't list the color names on the side, but I still love them. They still work amazingly. I just like alcohol-based markers. They're one of my favorite art supplies. <laughs> Next to like digital art, you know? Also in the Copic Doodle Pack, they include, I don't know how to say this, but it's a sparkly pink water-based pen. And I'm definitely gonna have to get a close up and just show you how glittery this writes. And then finally, this is actually the very first Copic fine liner that I own. It is a Copic multi liner in the color wine and it's a 0.3 and these are really great to use with your Copics. You won't have any smudging or blurring of the lines and it's in a really fun wine color which should complement these other art supplies really nicely. Next up we have a pencil. It's the Faber-Castell two and a half HB. A pencil still a pencil. <laughs> For the candy, these are Swizzlers Parma Violets. I'm not from the UK, so I see a lot of new candy in these boxes since this box is based in the UK. I guess I could try this. I don't usually eat a lot of candy, but today seems like a special occasion. Do you think they'll be like grape flavor? They taste a little fruit punchy to me. They're very similar to like Smarties or Rockets, but I think I prefer the flavors of Smarties to these. These candies are great when you're a kid and you want to play doctor and you're like, take your medicine, but it's candy. But I do appreciate their commitment to the color purple. Mm -hmm. All right, a white gel pen is something I use a lot and this is the Derwent paint pen. So it's a little bit different, but you can get the same effect, if not better and more consistently. So this is in the color white. It's a size 0.5, so it might be a bit large. It is a paint pen, so we're gonna have to prep it. I feel like, why am I acting like I'm knowledgeable about all these things? Just because it's my box. <laughs> but I kind of know some things to a certain extent sometimes. Oh, there it goes. But you can't see it because that's white paper. That'll be perfect for adding like highlights and little doodads to the illustration. Ooh, the sticker this month. It's purple and sparkly. Like it's not actually sparkly, it's made to look sparkly. That makes sense. But it's still purple. <laughs> of course there had to be a kneaded eraser. It's my personal favorite type of eraser. I've never tried this one. This is the Lyra Germany kneaded eraser. It says it's high quality. It comes in a cute little box. Maybe it's to protect it from looking like this, like mine. Do you guys remember this one? This one came in a box. I don't remember which box, but it was solid white when it started. <laughs> Usually they start gray, so there's not that much of a difference and you can't really tell until it gets like black, but this one started white. <laughs> this one looks like it's going to be gray. If I could get it opened. There we go. Oh, it's, okay. it's like a little treasure chest and the little kneaded eraser fits in perfectly. 
Well, that won't last long. <laughs> Wait till it's not a square anymore. Let's see what consistency it is. I've had gooey kneaded erasers and more stiff kneaded erasers. I like one right smack dab in the middle. Okay. It's on the firmer side. <laughs> Look at me. A kneaded eraser aficionado. I need, oh yeah, see, okay. It just needs to be worked a little or kneaded, if you will. It's already getting softer. Oh, I just love kneaded erasers. If you didn't know, kneaded erasers are cool because they don't leave eraser shavings. They absorb the graphite instead. So they don't do the best erasing job. So you do trade a little bit of like perfect erasing for the comfort of no eraser shavings. And that is a trade I'm always willing to make. I just mentioned you get a cute little turd. So I just want one of these beautiful things on their desk. <laughs> yeah. All right, there's something else. In oh my gosh. Okay, I was seeing that people were sharing pictures of this box to me and I saw this and some reason just didn't register that it came in the box. Ow. <laughs> so this is a special gift from Scrawlerbox to all subscribers to celebrate their 50th box. That's really cool. I love enamel pins. I have a backpack full of them. He's so small. Look how cute that is. It's all its tiny perfection. <laughs> well, of course I dropped it. Wait, which way was up? Was there an up or is it the same? So this is the menu listing all the supplies that we just went through, like the Copic purple doodle pack. Oh, there's paper. Oh, wait, <laughs> we haven't gotten there yet. As well as a prompt. It's really weird, like reading someone talking about me. Why is that so weird? <laughs> I'm just so excited. This is honestly, whoa, excuse me. This is a really nice box. I'm very happy with it and I'm glad to be associated with it in some way, even though I didn't really put it together. <laughs> I can see my art under there. Oh! We'll get there when we get there. This is the Canson paper nicknamed The Wall. It's a revolutionary paper specifically designed for graffiti artists, illustrators, and designers. It's called The Wall because it acts a lot like drawing on a wall. It's completely opaque, bleed proof, and double-sided. So you should be able to draw on either side of it. That's really cool. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing the art. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta acknowledge this. Ooh. I've never had my art printed on something so nice. Oh yeah, see, do you hear the thickness? So this is actually an illustration I made using these four supplies and then other things that I owned. I went out and bought it when I heard that it was going to be included in the box. I wanted to make sure that the art I made was made with these actual supplies. I just felt like that was important. I actually filmed the entire process of creating this. So I think we should hop in over there and I'll kind of show you the original piece and some of the stages I went. Shoot, it's all wrinkly. Actually, before we get there, I have quite a, I have a whole handful of stuff I need to show you. So this is actually how it started. This was something I just mocked up in digital using like the colors off the computer of what Copic said these colors looked like on their website. And I kind of just mocked something up. You can kind of see the difference in time spent on these two things. And then once I had an idea that I kind of liked, look how different the purse looks. This kind of supplements as a thumbnail, just digitally, so it looks a little nicer and cleaner. And then from here, I moved on to a blank piece of paper, kind of like this one. It's actually A5 cardstock. It's nothing too fancy. And I started sketching out what would one day become this. After one last quick reference at the thumbnail I created digitally, I began sketching it out on the paper. Now, something I did consciously with this is that I didn't keep looking at my reference. Like I knew the vague idea of it. I had drawn it. And when I draw something, it kind of like gets inputted into my memory in a way that just looking at something does not do for me. <laughs> so I don't need to keep looking back at it. And when I don't keep looking back at it, I can make changes as I draw that will benefit the drawing overall because I've already made those mistakes in the thumbnail and I can kind of just use experience, you know, to make those decisions in the process. Whereas if I keep looking at my reference, I'm going to end up with a closer copy. And that also includes copying the mistakes. What I really like about this drawing is that it's just so perfectly right up my alley, guilty pleasure art right here. And I knew I was going to have to make a print that was supposed to showcase me and like the things that I draw. I don't want to like mislead people anyway. I knew that this is the perfect opportunity not to try anything new and just <clears throat> just draw exactly what I want to draw. <laughs> and you may notice <laughs> that that is exactly what I did. I drew big poofy hair, the half updo ponytail that I just love so much, pinafore dresses, thigh high socks, super glittery. Like this was 
the perfect little piece of art to just put a little pep in my step. And boy, did I have fun with it. <laughs> to add the smallest bit of challenge to it though, I did try to draw glasses being like taken off her head. I thought it would bring a little bit of interest to a drawing of someone who's just standing there. Like obviously if I put the hands on the hips, like it's gonna be a little boring. So to just a little bit of an action, which is very, very simple. I chose removing glasses from her face. <laughs> then the rest of the sketch is just going over and refining things, except when it came to the purse, I decided to design something completely different. Originally it was like a perfect little circle purse um, but then I decided to try something else I kind of first just drew like a weird square pillow and as soon as I did that I just had this vision of a purse so I just kind of went with it it's like rounded on the top flat on the bottom so at this point the drawing looks like this this is actually the original pencil sketch for this drawing I was pretty happy with it you can kind of see there's a bit of a difference not too much like the strap and things like that. But I was way, way, way too nervous to just go in and create my illustration on top of this like I would usually do because this felt like a bigger deal to me. So what I did was I scanned this and printed it out and it looked like this. There's extra little doodles on here. It's fine. <laughs> and then with this, I created my own light box because I don't own a light box. I used a deep picture frame and then my phone set full brightness and I actually turned it on a YouTube video so it would entertain me at the same time. And then and I put a new piece of paper on top of it and I think I taped it and I began inking with this Copic fine liner through the light onto the new piece of paper. What happened next? Okay I think from there I had the line art done so I began coloring it using these two Copic markers and then the glitter pen as well. So I'll show you the process of that right now. What I did was I started with the pink glitter pen and I colored in all of the accessories. Some of the places I went over it a couple of layers just so that there's a nice good coverage of pink glitter. Then next I used mauve shadow and I added in all of the shadows of the hair. So like any place that not a lot of light would be able to reach that involved the hair. <laughs> This is basically a two marker challenge, so I had to really think about how I was going to spread out these colors, layer these colors, and just use them together in a way that's not gonna look mushy. So since Mauve Shadow was the lighter of the two colors, I used this first just to add shadow anywhere that I might end up adding a darker shadow, but wasn't quite sure if I was ready for that kind of commitment. Just went around the entire drawing and did that. I also used it for little details in the hair. When I draw hair, I like it big and chunky, but I thought this would be a fun experiment was to try and use the marker to make it look like separate strands. And like, it wasn't just a big chunk of hair, but it was actually built up of many, many small hair strands. Next, I jumped in there with the blueberry color and I started adding in the accent colors. Now I put this everywhere where I was like, yes, I want this to pop. I want this to be an obvious different color than everything else in this drawing, like the shirt and the socks. You don't need me to tell you that this is a very dark color, so you have to really commit with this color. And I think I did a pretty good job of spreading it throughout the illustration, adding a little bit on like the lips to add a pop of color higher up in the drawing and making sure that no one place was just like way darker than the rest and drew your eye towards something I didn't want you to draw your eye towards. And then for the gel pen that I used was the Secura Decores white gel pen. And I used this to add highlights specifically to like the sunglasses to make it look like that was a shinier material. And then I used the chisel side of the chow to draw in fun sh abstract shapes in the background, just to make sure the character didn't look like they're standing in a white abyss, but a white abyss with purple sparkly smoke, which seems infinitely better. At this point, the drawing still felt pretty plain to me. So I went in again with the glitter pink pen and started just really going to town, honestly, like anywhere that I could possibly put it, I did. <laughs> it really doesn't show up on camera as like pretty as this pen is, but you'll have to take my word for it. And then I threw like a million stripes onto her pinafore dress. I really liked tracing the shape because skirts are round, right? You can't just draw a straight line on that or it's not gonna look like the line is actually on the fabric and interacting with the world. So you have to kind of like follow the 3D shape, which I think is really fun. This doesn't have anything really to do with the drawing, but it was one of the most exciting things that ever happened in my life. The power literally went out while I was drawing this. And then even more excitingly, it came back. Yeah. So that's something that happened. 
And then I was done with the drawing. So now the drawing is basically completely done, or is it? It looks like this. This is the original, you can see the bleed through illustration that I made for this print, but you might see a few different, actually the colors are way different, but uh, that just happens, I guess. <laughs> Can't really uh, fix that. You might see though other differences besides color, specifically around the eyes, because I scanned this back into the computer and cleaned up the eyes. I actually did two print tests to try and get the colors as accurate as I could, but it was always pretty dark, but you can kind of see how the eyes have changed a little bit from the original sketch. And I think I cleaned up the mouth a little maybe. Oh, I also, it looks like twisted the character just a smidge. And there we have the print made with most of the supplies in this box. I do want to thank everyone who requested that I be featured in a scrawler box. It really is like, <laughs> it's really, really cool to be featured like this. So thank you. Thank you very much. I am beyond thrilled that to have this opportunity. I guess we should make something in real time, right? Right? With this paper? Why don't we go ahead and try something? I could redraw ba -ba -da -da -da, this character just right now, right here, right now. It would be a pleasure. <laughs> okay, let's start. Obviously we gotta change up the pose a little. We'll need a body. She's got that cute pinafore dress. Maybe it's a little longer than this. <laughs> Whoops, don't need to flash anyone. I'm gonna put the sunglasses on top of her head this time. That way we don't block any of the face. That was like kind of my one regret about this. <laughs> so I feel like it makes this lip look really, really weird. But you know, we're all gonna critique ourselves till we go blue in the face. <laughs> I'm keeping the eyes like really simple right now. Well, I try to make sure that the face... I almost reached for my needed eraser. We got a new baby. It's a boy. <laughs> this one's named Beluga. This one gives me like a blue cool tone. So maybe we can name them. Hmm. What's your name, little guy? Leroy? <laughs> oh well, it's stuck. Once you come up with a name, you can't change it, right? Little Leroy. Jenkins. <laughs> Those glasses on top of her head. Oh, and then she has a scrunchie with the big ponytail. Half up, half down do. She has her little turtleneck. People have been tagging me in a lot of art drawing this purse. So we got to make that kind of a focal point in some way. What if she's holding it like in front of her? That out. <laughs> she looks a little steampunk right now without like detail on the glasses. Oh, I love that little shape right there. Guess we kind of have to move the glasses up a little. I drew this like a month ago and I feel like already my style has changed. It is so cons consistent. I'm so jealous of people who have like that one art style that they always draw in and then me, I'm like, well, right now I want it to look a little bit more realistic and oh, now I want it to have huge ears and then oh, 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 oh. Now I'm just drawing an alien so it can't look real anyway. <sighs> There's always some excuse. I can't wait to see how this paper works with Copics. If it works better than, you know, what I've been using. <laughs> see if we put our hands here, holding onto the purse. Again, I didn't have room to draw our feet, but you know, sacrifices were made. Gotta include more glitter everywhere. Yes. And whatever this like smoky stuff is that I just included to fill up space. She kind of looks like a rock star coming out on the show with like fake <laughs> steam. Well, it's not fake, it's like real, but you know. You know. And she also has a bunch of rings on her fingers. Although I haven't even drawn her hands. All right, let's go in, take the kneaded eraser. This is what they're really great for. Wiggle it down into a worm and then roll it up and down on your paper. It's gonna pick up that graphite and get real dirty, which is exactly what we want. So now the sketch will look like this, barely visible, which is perfect for adding in the liner. Our wine colored Copic multi-liner. It doesn't just do fine lines, it does all the lines. <laughs> I always like to start with the eyes, so today will be no exception. I really wanna get her nose the same. So I feel like her nose is kind of different from how I always draw noses, which is what I liked about it, but it was still kind of similar. A little ribbed section of the sweater. Bing! Might be called piping. Ooh! But yeah, that's on the purse. <laughs> There's a bit of a quilted pattern here. This is one of those elements that I like doing the line art of more than I like sketching it. You can kind of see how the sketch was just like... But this, I'm like, yes! And there are not a lot of things that I feel that way about. Oops, I'm changing it up. What am I doing? No, I want to keep that lower. Ooh, 
Well, luckily she has a bit of a design at the bottom. We might be able to hide that. Oh, that still looks bad. What did I do? That's more erased than it was. Now we can go in and add adding a color. So I believe I used mauve shadow for some of these sections. Look how even the tone is. You can't really see any streaks. It's also because this is a brand new marker and it's real nice and juicy. And then I added like squiggles and stuff so that the hair wasn't completely white. There we go. I think I did a little bit simpler than I did there. I was bleeding. No bleeding so far. Good, because I haven't put anything behind it. <laughs> well, I guess I use this for the eyebrows. I think I might have used the colorless blender to blend that out. And I have it right here, so I'm going to guess that maybe I did. Let me try and blend that out a bit. I don't remember if I did that or not, but there you go. I think it's the kind of glitter you might only be able to appreciate in person. It's like tons of tiny little like silver flecks of just glitzy glitter. Oh, scrunchy too. And it's water-based, so you can kind of build it up and get it darker to a certain extent, but not too much. And she has like a fun line on the bottom of her skirt. Blueberry oh, for the sweater here. We'll see if this bleeds through this paper. Because this this one's this is a marker, alright. Wow. I'm impressed. This paper would make a really good goalie. Nothing seems to get through it. <laughs> I am drawing a little bit smaller, which makes it kind of hard to get a certain amount of detail. There we go. And it looks like I used this to color in the glasses because they're more sunglasses. Oh, and then I think I used this for the weird smoky stuff in the background. <laughs> Random smoky stuff. There you go. Fun little background. Okay, now the white gel pen. Oh, and we still need to add. I think I used this. The sparkly pink liner and add the details to our little pinafore here. And what I did was I made it denser towards the center and they're a bit separate, more separated towards the outside edge. And it kind of like, I don't know, it like cinches in the waist, I feel like in a really fun way. So I'm going to do that as well and start to get wider as we reach the bottom. And I think I just darkened up this section so that it looks like a different color. I'm gonna use the mauve shadow. Add uh, some shading on top of that. Oh wait, I used this for the lips. Ooh yeah, look at those. It looks like I just added fun like shapes and details just to kind of symbolize shining or glitter or something. Perfect. I just realized I never swatched any of these things, mostly because I already did. <laughs> and then I add some glitter, little bits and bobs to make this part actually look glittery. So we're just going to draw it in ourselves. This is a really nice tool. It's not a gel pen. It's definitely better. I think I've used one before. I don't know what happened to it, but I think I'm going to keep this on my desk for sure. This is kind of cute. It's a little like companion piece. <laughs> kind of wish I had drawn her bigger, kind of like this one, the way she fills the page a bit better. But I obviously spent a lot more time coming up with this one's idea and making sure that I liked it. Whereas this one, this one was a bit quicker. Here's our finished illustration for today, along with uh, this guy, which is actually what this one. Yeah, this one. Oh, I can really see that glitter. Hope you can in like the scrunchie specifically very fun. Will you marry me? <laughs> I want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks again for all of your support and getting me to this point of being featured in a scroller box. I am seriously so thankful for you. So thank you. Scroller box mentioned that they'd like to do a giveaway to celebrate their 50th box. So I'll have a link in the description for all of that information. I think they're going to be giving away this specific box. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm sure it'll tell you wherever I direct you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know the link right now. If you're interested in getting your own scholar box subscription or entering that giveaway, I will have a link in the description with more information. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week, and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!